Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Meghna Bharadwaj, and I am here in conversation with Mr. Ajay Tanakulam. He is uh, one of the speakers of the Inspire Challenge, and he he has one of the most interesting projects that I have gone through. The the project he has been working with working with is Farm Phone for sustaining incomes and market access, which provides a digital community based. Support for small farmers and connecting them to their markets. So, uh, we welcome, Mr. Rajay. Thank you very much, Meghna. Great. So, I have just two questions for you. Uh, definitely based on the project you have been working with. Number one is uh, if 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 you are planning on connecting small farmers with their markets, uh, how uh, how are those two related? Like, if for example, I am a farmer and I grow tomatoes. the markets near me might not be in need of tomatoes they might be in need of onions so how does this and and the market which is in need of tomatoes might be a really far away based place or somewhere so how does this connection go on so the way uh, we see this is i think the first point to note is right a, lo a lot more small farm farmers are owners of uh, old feature phones fewer farmers own smartphones okay and on top of this fewer women farmers own smartphones smartphones yeah. uh, more women more women farmers have feature phones than smartphones okay uh, so this is the observation the other thing is of the farmers that we interact with many farmers use uh, smartphones for uh, you know uh, acquiring information uh, hmm. they don't use it to uh, they're not interacting with the internet in some sense right right, uh, right so the way they like to interact even on whatsapp is they record the voice if there's some issue about something say for example uh, magasul works with a large number of farmers right if there's an issue that they want to learn about and or they have a question they will take a photo of their farm and record the question on whatsapp and send the voice recording right oh. so this the interaction that they're doing is the more comfortable with voice than to type out things and yeah. stuff like that right so these are observations that uh, that we saw right now in terms of uh, connectivity uh, you mentioned that the demand for what they're growing might be far away from where the local market is hmm. so the idea of a farm phone is uh, is to have a simple community where say for example if uh, megana is a farmer who has produced tomatoes uh, she can dial in uh, into a widely publicized number and leave information about uh, you know the area that she's calling from the sort of produce that she has and the price that uh, you expect uh, and then the software will then uh, you know analyze the the call that you've made mm -hmm. uh, tr try to figure out why you called what sort of produce you're selling and who you should be connected to right similarly there might be other people of con consumers of tomatoes right these could right. be uh, an individual customer in a in a housing society in in bangalore or this could be a food processor who's making a pulp out of uh, tomatoes in hyderabad right they also leave their uh, recording and their demand onto the same platform what the software will do eventually is to match supply and demand and do as much of aggregation as possible right and at the same time farm phone will of course have to partner with uh, transporters to ensure that megna's produce and maybe neighboring farmers who also have tomatoes can all be uh, collected together and delivered to this person in hyderabad who makes tomato pulp okay. so uh, this is how the network works yes and the idea is that if you have if you are if you have a smartphone you can the the software will work on the smartphone as well but the key uh, key issue that we want to solve here is uh, a lot of people are more comfortable with just voice and so there should be a solution for them as well right absolutely uh, this this is kind of a really uh, simple approach to what complex thing was going on inside my mind and i just had another doubt uh, how how would this uh, you know communication process and the transactions and also the meeting and transferring goods how would this go on at times of a pandemic like this where human interaction is definitely limited to you know through technology or through only a screen so let's uh, take a, a simple example right say for example uh, this is the time of pandemic 
the only set of people uh, you are interacting with typically in a rural area are the people that are within a uh, one kilometer radius, right? right? Most people are now not undertaking long, long distance travel, not wanting to go to the nearest market that might be say five, 10 kilometers away, hmm. right? So what you do is uh, you've made a call, you've left your information on the platform, right? right? Uh, the platform also has, in addition to buyers and suppliers, the platform, of course, will have to onboard uh, people like uh, transporters. These these will be transporters at all levels, right? At the village mm -hmm. level, the transport transporter could just be a share auto. Right. And then from the nearest town, it will be a, uh, a registered large transporter. This could be somebody like uh, MSS Transports in South India or Navata Transport in North India, right? Yes. So once things go on scale, you will need uh, both local level uh, transporters who could be share autos or operator of a Tata Ace and so on, who will collect from the local farmers, take the produce to the nearest uh, market. You know, registered long distance transporter, not a market, to the transporter, right? And they are just basically connecting to the uh, your Hyderabad customer. The Hyderabad customer again then picks up from the nearest market. Right. So we don't see the only place where you would need uh, some sort of an intermediation in the beginning at least uh, so for example right now how do things work right when a farmer sells to a local mandi there's a lot of faith in it and the faith has come from a lot of historical interactions right the trader is not coming and checking the quality of produce each time what they do is the farmer is sending stuff the trader decides on what is the quality and makes payment based on that right okay. so there's some level of trust uh, sometimes the trader will be uh, complaining that the farmers are not sending good quality produce. Some, many times the farmers will be complaining that they're not being paid for the quality that they're paying. Right. So the only physical intermediation that will require in, in the beginning until the trust develops over the channel and that all parties are playing properly is a judge who checks whether the quality of the produce is what it is. Right. right. And the way that we do is, uh, of course, we, we already have a field network in place. So we will need, we'll have that person in the beginning go and inspect until trust builds into the system. Right. Until that point, we'll have to have people go and inspect and make sure that, uh, you know, you're not just, the farmer is not just loading, you as a farmer are not just loading rotting, rotten tomatoes. Right. Too. The quality assurances should, will have to take so place. In, apart from that person, there's nobody else who has to do any travel anywhere. All the mm. discussion is over, only over the phone. Absolutely. So, uh, thank you so much for giving uh, insights into this project. I'm sure many many startups or many students like me who are looking into this uh, field uh, on a very uh, beginner scale will definitely take some key points from it. And thank you so much for giving me this time, sir. Thank you very much, Prima. All the best. Thank you, sir.